This week on Record in Focus, religious leaders call for more military action in Iraq. Controversy over Melbourne's World Congress of Families. And Hillsong set to clean up at Nashville's Dove Awards. This is In Focus Christian News and Current Affairs. Those stories coming up soon. Hello, it's great to have your company today. Now, Ken Kingston, I hear you're brushing up on your Chinese language skills. Well, not quite. What's up with that? I think you actually need skills in the first <laughs> place in order to brush them up, and I don't have any of those skills. But sort of. A little later in the program, Pastor Sammy Lee will be in, and he does speak Chinese. Mm -hmm. He'll be explaining some of the fascinating parallels between Chinese written characters and the gospel story. You're looking a bit dubious there, Danielle. No, no, Kent, we'll just, we'll wait and see with that one. But, and politics. Yes, politics. Uh, Lyle Shelton will be joining us from Canberra a bit later. I'll be asking him about the Australian government's response to the Iraq situation and also about legalising marijuana. It'll be interesting to see what his perspective is. That's right, Kent, it will, but not before the news. All yours, Danielle. Christian groups have welcomed the Australian government's announcement that it will offer refugee visas to Christians and other minorities escaping Iraq's terrorist threat. According to the ABC, the special humanitarian visas do not represent an expansion of Australia's refugee program, but will fall within its yearly intake of nearly 14,000 refugee places. The opposition and the Greens have both called for an expansion in Australia's refugee intake of at least 5,000. And in a surprising development, key Christian leaders around the world are calling specifically for military intervention against the extremists who have declared an Islamic state in parts of Iraq and Syria. The president of Iraq's Catholic bishops has expressed disappointment that America has not taken stronger action against ISIS. And in the US itself, a broad coalition of Christian, Jewish and other representatives, including the Southern Baptists and presidential hopeful Dr Ben Carson, is calling for expanded airstrikes. They're also urging the US to arm Kurdish forces and others fighting against the Islamist extremists. According to Assist News Service, the conflict in eastern Ukraine includes religious dimensions, with the evangelical community targeted by pro-Russian separatists. Supporters of the Far East Broadcasting Company, a Christian radio ministry, are coming to terms with the deaths of four of their volunteers, who, it's alleged, were kidnapped and beaten to death by separatists in what's being described as a targeted attack. The organisation's broadcast tower, which is located in the battle zone of Slavansk, was also destroyed. Wesley Mission is asking for help in supporting the 2.7 million Australians who care for a disabled family member. The organisation's research shows that 6 out of 10 carers provide 100 hours of care per week or more. 8 out of 10 carers fear they will suffer a mental breakdown due to a lack of support and respite care. Caring for a child with disability is more than a full-time job. It's 24 hours a day, non-stop caring. Help us give carers a break before they break down. Wesley Mission provides respite care for people with disabilities, giving carers some time out so that they can perform at their best. Both New Zealanders and Australians have been shocked at the death of Warriana Wright, who fell from a Gold Coast hotel balcony in an incident that police are treating as a murder investigation. The death of the 26-year-old New Zealand tourist has particularly affected the Porirua Adventist Church in Lower Hutt near Wellington, where Ms Wright's mother is actively involved. The pastor says the church is doing what it can to support family and friends. Strong words have been exchanged and Australia's political divisions have been revealed in the lead up to next weekend's World Congress of Families regional event to be held in Melbourne. Featured speakers at the Congress include conservative politicians, church leaders and medical experts who will tackle controversial topics including euthanasia, abortion and the definition of marriage. The Social Services Minister Kevin Andrews has been criticised for agreeing to open the Congress which is described by news.com.au as including speakers and sponsors with extremist views. 
But a spokesperson for the minister said the event falls legitimately within his portfolio. In a survey of Australia's most trusted brands, a church-owned company has again come up trumps. Sanitarium Wheat Bix has been voted the most trusted breakfast food and the ninth most trusted brand overall out of a field of hundreds of competitors. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has been a leader in the breakfast cereal industry ever since Adventist doctor John Harvey Kellogg invented the humble cornflake in 1891. Wheat Bix continues to be the most popular breakfast cereal in both Australia and New Zealand, which hasn't stopped Sanitarium experimenting with the formula. They recently introduced a gluten-free variety. And another Aussie export is also set to sweep the field in the USA. Hillsong Music has attracted an unprecedented 10 nominations in the lead up to Christian Music's Night of Nights, the Dove Awards. Oceans Where Feet May Fail, which is fast becoming a Hillsong United classic, has been nominated for Song of the Year. And the Sydney Megachurch's Young and Free Band is in the running for New Artist of the Year. The 45th annual GMA Dove Awards celebrate and recognise a variety of gospel music genres and will again this year be held in Nashville, Tennessee. 46,000 people have attended one of the Adventist Church's biggest ever youth events at Oshkosh in Wisconsin, USA. The International Pathfinder Camporee attracted 10 to 15 year olds from across North America and around the world for a six-day festival of outdoor activities, music, drama and spiritual inspiration. Maybe his God truly is a living God who protects him. There is room for hope. Hope is a dangerous thing. The theme of the Camporee was Forever Faithful, with a focus on the life of the Old Testament prophet Daniel. See, God used Daniel to talk to the kings of his age. God used Daniel to talk to Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar and Darius. New babies are not known for their timing or patience, and Georgia Kate Hogan is no exception. She managed to time her birth for just when Sydney Adventist Hospital staff were moving the maternity ward into a brand new building. Baby Georgia has become a minor celebrity, the first baby born in the new 12-storey LW Clark Tower. Not that she seems to care. She wasn't too keen on the bathing, I have to say. She sort of, <laughs> it was quite traumatic experience, the bath, but, um, but she's, she's lived to tell the tale. The building is lovely. You can have all the views in the world, but without the, without the great staff, um, you know, we'd really go anywhere. That if they had the staff that were here and transplanted them into another building, um, we'd be there as well. The new hospital facilities, including operating theatres and possibly intensive care, are coming online over the next few months. The new building will be officially opened in October. And that's all the news we have for you this week. Kent. Thanks, Danielle. We'll take a short break now. I'll be back in just a moment with Lyle Shelton and Politics in Focus. Stay tuned. Discover some of these artists from Salta Music. Anna Weatherup. Old people get ready for the train to join. Castles in air. Eric and Monique. You alone are my strength, my refuge. Sapphire. Here's love, reach the bottom of the ocean. No matter what shade of musical taste you have, you might just find something that sings to you. It's all waiting to be discovered at saltamusic.com. Fresh and exciting original Christian music from Salter Music. Welcome back, and it's great to have Lyle Shelton joining us from Canberra. How are you, Lyle? Yeah, really well, thanks, Kent. Uh, we heard earlier in the news, Lyle, that the Australian government will be accepting Christian and Yazidi refugees from Iraq, but this doesn't actually represent an expansion of our refugee program, does it? 
Look, uh, it, it's certainly uh, a good news story, Kent. There's no doubt about that. But you're dead right. It, it isn't an expansion of our, repu our refugee program. Currently, we only take uh, 13,700 refugees per annum as part of our humanitarian intake. And mm -hmm. uh, ACL, along with many others, have been calling for that to be increased. And obviously, with the crisis in Iraq and Syria, where the need is just overwhelming, where, where um, more than a million people in both countries have fled their homes as in the face of uh, violent persecution, uh, the need is enormous and I think we as a country should do a little bit better. But, but I must say this is certainly a welcome first step, there's no doubt. Are you aware, Lyle, of whether this is just Christians and Yazidis or if it is you know, or, or, you know, Shia um, uh, Muslims or um, you know, some of the, the Turkmen minorities coming out of Iraq as well, basically anyone who's escaping from ISIS? Yeah, my understanding, Kent, is that these are 4,400 places, uh, 2,000 from 2,200 from Syria and 2,200 from uh, northern Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, are mainly Christians and Yazidis. But uh, I would also be equally concerned for uh, Shia minorities who are also being persecuted. There's been some uh, brutal killings of them as well as the killings of Christians and Yazidis. Uh, and there's also the followers of uh, John the Baptist, the Mandaeans, a very ancient uh, religion, which which also uh, is there in significant but minority numbers and they're under incredible duress as well. So I would hope that uh, all of the vulnerable not minorities, uh, not just the Christians and the Yazidis, uh, yeah. would be uh, considered under this, uh, in this latest announcement. Okay, fair enough. Um, on, on another t uh, topic, Lyle, uh, it seems there's growing support even amongst some you know, fairly mainstream groups for decriminalising cannabis, in particular for medicinal use. Is it time for, for us to reconsider this issue? Well, it just depends what's meant by that, uh, Kent. Um, there's no doubt that uh, with uh, drugs like morphine, um, there's opiates from heroin. And now heroin's an incredibly dangerous drug, drug but uh, components of that are used uh, in morphine, which provides pain relief and has been for, for a long, long time. Mm. Now, if we're talking about using components of, um, of the cannabis plant for medicines, uh, that's, that's a, a completely different matter to saying to a sick person, well, look, if you're feeling a bit sick, uh, light up a joint to try and um, ease your pain. Sure. I think uh, they're two separate matters. Yeah, okay. So uh, is it time for actual you know, medical trials and to, you know, to sort of legalise it in, in a controlled or, or limited sense? Well, I don't think we should be um, legalising it in, in the sense of, of uh, what some people are calling for, and that is if, if someone's sick, they should be allowed to grow a few uh, cannabis plants uh, in their garden and then smoke it uh, as, as some sort of self-prescribed um, medicinal use. I think anything mm. that's done should be prescribed by a doctor and it should be done after rigorous scientific research. Even the Australian Medical Association says that the jury is still out on whether uh, cannabis has uh, medicinal benefits. So I think we need to do the research uh, first. I think this debate's getting a little bit ahead of itself and certainly though some of those campaigning for it uh, are wanting um, to see marijuana decriminalised so that sick people can, uh, can light up a joint at home uh, mm. to ease their suffering. I think we need to ease pain and suffering uh, through through the proper medical processes, not through self-medication of a dangerous psychotic drug. Fair enough. Okay, thanks for your time today, Lyle. It's a pleasure, Kent. Thanks for having us. We'll take a short break now. I'll be back in a moment with Pastor Sammy Lee, who says ancient Chinese writing contains echoes of the gospel story. Interesting. Signs of the Times, a magazine for a world on the brink. And this month in Signs, best-selling author Max Lucado on facing life's challenges. Why should human beings have more rights than animals? There's danger in staying permanently connected to the digital world. Ten fun and healthy activities your family can enjoy together. All in this month's Signs of the Times. Subscribe to Signs today and change your life. Hi, welcome back. Well, you might not realise that in Australia, the second most spoken language at home, after English of course, is actually Mandarin. So yeah, in Australia we have a lot of people of Chinese descent and to help us understand perhaps some really effective ways to reach uh, these people with the gospel is Pastor Sammy Lee, welcome. Thank you. I understand that um, you work with a, a lot of different cultural groups, don't you, and are people from a lot of different religions. That's right, yes. And we're only talking about one small section of, of what you do today. Okay. Um, but the, the fascinating thing that, that you've been telling me is, is how far back Chinese history actually goes. I mean, we all know it's ancient, but how, how far back? 
Well, according to the uh, Chinese historian, they had their uh, was that the history starting in actually the year 2500 BC. Wow. So uh, just, uh, just so that our viewers can get their heads around what that means, yes. what was happening in Bible times then? Uh, in Bible time, according to uh, Bishop Usher, mm -hmm. the uh, very well accepted uh, was the new religious or Christian historian, Yes, the flood happened in the year 2348 BC. So that's only about 150 years uh, different. Bef before Chinese history kicks off. So the Ch according to them, that is the earlier 150 yes. years. Mm. But for sure, they said that there was a kingdom already in China, 2205 mm. BC, okay. which is 142 years after the flood. So wow. you see that is not contradictory so, to the so, Bible So history. Be before Abraham, sometime between the flood and Abraham, yes. we have Chinese legend becoming Chinese history and re recorded history and we can start to yes. see reliable dates. Well, that that's really old. Yes. That's, that's it is old. That is incredibly old. <laughs> and and are there legends from and history from those times that sort of match up with stories that we read in the Bible or have some crossover? Yes, uh, they talk about the their ancestor of the Chinese people or mm -hmm. the Han people, which is actually they call the Yellow King. Mm -hmm. Huang Di means Yellow King or Yellow mm -hmm. Emperor. Okay. And according to them, uh, this Yellow Emperor. Uh, was the ancestor of all the Chinese people. Okay. And so, and in, 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 we studied about the characteristic and the, the life of these people described mm. and the names of these people. Mm. We can see that it corresponds with the children of Noah. <laughs> wow, yeah. that old. Yes. That's incredible. Now, so far as the writing is concerned, I mean, obviously we know Hebrew yes. and, mm -hmm. you know, Paleo-Hebrew is some of the earliest forms of, of mm -hmm. writing. What about Chinese? Where where do Chinese characters come from? The Chinese character, according to the uh, archaeological uh, discoveries in uh, uh, a province called Anhui, there is now a museum of ancient arts, mm -hmm. and it has been proven that that characters must have started at the latest is as an 1800 BC. Wow, which is uh, about the same time as the other uh, ancient characters like Sumerian mm -hmm. or Babylonian mm -hmm. and uh, Egyptians. Wow, so they, when the cuneiform and the yeah, hieroglyphs yes, and all that was, that's right, yes. Chinese writing was coming. The same, the wow. same character. They are yeah. uh, actually a pictograph. Mm -hmm. They are drawings mm -hmm. of simple uh, 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 things and uh, stories. Mm -hmm. So it becomes the first communication, a way or communication between the people during mm -hmm. those days. Now, so, something really interesting that, that you've been saying, uh, uh, Pastor Sammy, is is that these characters actually tell stories that even surprise Chinese people today about some of the stories they tell and how they cross over with, with the biblical narrative. Can yes. you share just maybe three of those characters? I've, we, we've, we've got a, um, s s some paper here for you, for you yeah. to do a, a little bit of Chinese writing for us. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. I'd, I'd, I'd be really interested to see how this works. All right, now, like for instance, the word, this one is, word chow. Chow? And, and, and what does chow mean? Sorry yeah. if I say chow wrong. Cha, <laughs> chow yeah. is to create or to make. Okay. Okay. No. So, so, he, so he, here we have chow. Okay, yeah. to create or make. So, uh, what's this made up of? No, this one is a abbreviation of breath. Breath. Yeah, uh, yeah, breath or breath. That is the same breath. Uh huh. Okay, that one, and this one. Uh, sorry, it's not that one. This one is the this is breath. Okay. And this one is earth. 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 Yes. 
Oh, breath and earth. Yes. So, so, and, and, yes. And so this in is, Genesis, yes. we, we have the story, of, story that, of creation. That God formed man out yes. of the dirt uh -huh. and breathed the breath of life. And, and this one is a walking person. Can you see that? There's a oh, hair yeah, yeah. there. There's, there's a, a walking, walking. Two legs. <laughs> yes. So that means walking or moving. Uh huh. So, in other words, to the Chinese, the word create means earth. Yeah. Added with breath, yes, it becomes a mouth. Mouth oh, means this, this, this square is a mouth. Is a mouth it's isn't a it? mouth. You see, and, uh, which also means person. Yeah. So a mouth is a symbol for a person. Yes. Okay. So he becomes a person that is moving right away, walking. That means there is animation there. Wow. So God <laughs> breathed the breath of life. Yes. Into, into that, this a man piece that he's of earth. Which is he made from the piece of and earth. he made a living walking and he made soul. A walking that's, in, that's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> that uh, that is amazing. Okay, oh, you, got, you, you got another one for us? <laughs> yes. All right. And then, when uh, and God created Eve. Yes. This one is a garden. Now look at that. That one is the earth, right? Yes. Earth. And underneath the earth is a mouth, which become a person. Uh -huh. And that person is the first person. And from the side of the first person comes the second person. From the side. <laughs> so <laughs> Eve, Eve being formed out of the rib of Adam. That's right. And this one is Yuan. Yuan is meaning garden. <laughs> garden. <laughs> yes. So the Chinese yes. character for garden. For garden is earth. Yeah. Mouth means uh, uh, become a human being, yeah. or can also means that God uses his mouth to create the first human being, yes. and the second one coming from this, and this is happening in the garden called the Garden of Eden. <laughs> so, yeah, so the Chinese character for the word garden has this gar Garden of Eden story in there. That's, that's right. That, that's incredible. <laughs> um, what, one, what, one more, one more. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, the devil comes mm -hmm. to tempt them. Mm -hmm. God said, all right, look, that is uh, two trees, right? Two in trees. In the past, that, that tree is like that. Yes. Okay, there is, there is the, the um, roots, oh, yes. there's the, the, oh, the, the leaves, yes. and then there's the bud going up, yes. and that is the, the, the uh, earth, the ground, okay, yes. ground. So two trees, and underneath means chin is to prohibit. Don't do this, don't do that. Yeah, okay, to prohibit. Prohibit. Uh, no smoking, no no parking. They yes. use this same character. So, so in, 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 in English, we would use this. That's right. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay. And that is two trees, and this is the character for God. Two trees, God underneath it is the first prohibition. Don't eat that one. Uh, wow, so the tree of life, the tree of good and evil, the right. knowledge of good and evil. But then, what happens if you put like that, that is again the two trees, yes. and underneath is a woman. Uh -huh. This is, uh, this means lan. Lan means greedy, covetous. <laughs> greedy? <laughs> yes. So that so is you have Eve. the story of Eve. Eve. This is the story of Eve. Wow. Looking at these two trees, God said, don't eat that one. Okay. You may eat this one, but it was so greedy. She 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 wanted the the one that is prohibited okay. too. Can, can, can we look at one more just before we finish? Yes. So, uh, salvation, I think, is one you really wanted to share with yes. us. Yes. So that was sin because yes. of that sin, tempted by the devil, and so they have to die. Mm -hmm. But then, because sin, you see, transgression. So this one is lamb. Mm -hmm. This one is I or me. Mm -hmm. And that is ye is righteousness. Righteousness. Yeah. So the Chinese character for righteousness includes a symbol of a lamb in it? Yes. And wow. this is amazing. Uh, it, it includes a lamb and there is also a cross in it. A and cross, okay. A cross yes. and a lamb in the symbol for righteousness. Yeah, yes. Wow. Uh -huh. and, and, uh, but here it is only a lamb. But mm -hmm. there are two two special characters that is talking about righteousness, about salvation, mm -hmm. about Jesus, about his death, mm -hmm. uh, redeeming, all these things. But look at this. This word I or me mm -hmm. consists of actually two parts. That one is a hand. Uh-huh. Okay? Yes. And and this one on the on the right is 
an ancient spear or lance. Oh, like a trident okay? sort of thing, yeah. Right. So the lamb is killed to give us righteousness, oh. and I am the hand that killed that lamb. Wow. So this, <laughs> this, is, this is like Jesus, yeah. the holy lamb of God, yes, on, on the cross, I being speared with a cross. By my sin. But this character was actually invented before Jesus this died was, on the cross. Yes. So it's actually prophetic. Far before Jesus. It's a yes. prophetic character. Exactly, wow. yes. Look, that, that is really powerful. It's powerful for me, and I'm mm -hmm. not a Chinese person, and I don't, I don't speak... <laughs> Chinese. Yes. How do Chinese people uh, respond when you present some of these things to them? Well, they are they are just they could not believe. They are amazed, and if they are if they are uh, honest, then they have to realize. In the past, they always say that the that Christianity is a foreign devil religion from yeah. the West. Yes. But we prove it to them mm. that no, your ancestors were the first ones before even Abraham mm. in worshiping the Creator God. Wow, wow. And they, and they use <laughs> the expression yes. Shangdi from Shang Di, yes. ancient times, the emperor yes. of heaven. Yes, yeah. Shangdi means the sovereign who is above. Ti, Ti is emperor, mm -hmm. you see? And, and Shang means above. So mm -hmm. he's the emperor above all others. The king above the all king kings. The king above all kings, yes. Oh. Well, those are incredible insights, you know, just to see that the, the story of mm -hmm. God, the story of Jesus is woven into, you know, not just, you know, Western history and, no. and culture, but also th through Chinese, you know, which we used to think of as being, you know, very foreign yeah. and strange. Hey, thank you so much for your, your time today. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure our audience has really had their minds opened, uh, yeah. you know, about the way God's been working yeah. all through these yeah. centuries. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Pastor it's my Samuel. pleasure. <laughs> We'll be back straight after the break. So you think you've got your future all planned out, right? Or maybe you're not sure yet what you want to do, who you want to be. But whatever path you choose to study, a great education matters. Because it doesn't just help you get a great job. It helps you prepare for what life can throw at you and live a great life. Avondale. It's education designed for life. Hi, welcome back. Well, I think there are good reasons why they say Mandarin and Cantonese are some of the hardest languages to learn, Kent, with oh, all those yeah. characters. Thousands of them. Yeah, but wasn't that just fascinating? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I think if it was just one or two characters that had mm. gospel themes, you know, we could probably write that off as yeah. a fluke. But it seems like Pastor Sammy Lee was just scratching the surface. It seems like there are dozens or, you know, hundreds of examples. Yeah, I agree, Kent, totally. I think that sometimes though, it is easy to think Christianity belongs to us. You know, we've kind of adopted it as our thing in the Western culture, but mm. really God's story does belong to everybody. Yeah, it's got to be universal, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, we're out of time for now, uh, but you can, of course, catch us uh, on our website, record.net.au, and we'll see you next week on Record in Focus. God bless. Thank you.